In our last episode, we found Penny Hornwright still alive and in the basement safe room of the Hornwright Mansion. We recruited her to help the Settlers of Foundation break into Vault 79. With Penny Hornwright and her motherload drilling robot in tow, we can head back to Foundation and tell Paige the good news. You've secured our way down to the vault pretty handily, haven't you? <laughs> I just can't believe your luck in finding Dr. Hornwright. Yeah, it was pretty lucky. Is she here already? She's getting some equipment brought down, I think. Better run, unless you want to find yourself carrying consoles around. Oh, but before you get going, though, let's talk business. It's nothing. I just did what needed to be done. Don't be modest. It makes it even more impressive. All right. I've been working on the next problem we need to solve for busting into Vault 79, that doozy of a laser grid. I figure we've got some experienced scavengers in Foundation already, folks who know a thing or two about busting bunkers. Small ones, anyway. Thing is, before I even start asking around, our youngest scavenger pops up to tell me she's got it handled. Handled? Before I even told her the problem. Uh, can you be more specific? What are you talking about? Oh, right. Sorry. I've been focusing on the problem too long. Tunnel vision. Let's see. Uh, basically, the problem is that there's really serious laser grids. The kind you can't just cut the power to disable. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. If they lose power for even a fraction of a second, They'll lock the whole thing down for hours. Days, maybe. Do you think she can do it? Honestly, maybe she's tougher than she seems. She's been with us for a while, so I can vouch for her loyalty at least. She said she has a way to beat the grid, so I'm inclined to believe her. Anyway, her name is Jen. Go talk to her, and I'll get back to work on figuring out a plan for these military-grade turrets. With that, we complete trade secrets and begin the quest Invisible Ties. Work with one of Paige's best to find out how to get around the laser grids in the vault. We also unlock a brand new Pip-Boy paint scheme that we can only get by completing this quest. We get the plan for the Pip-Boy 2000 Mark 7 paint scheme. This paint scheme is really interesting compared to the default Pip-Boy 2000. The Mark 7 is a more military olive green reminiscent of the Pip-Boy 3000 paint scheme from Fallout 4, though even then a bit brighter. That's the major change. Everything else is pretty much the same. It still has the yellow and black warning decals, but really the biggest piece of flair on this thing is someone has taken a bit of a masking tape, stuck it on there, and written Mark 7 on there. So it's not an official Robco paint scheme for the Pip-Boy. It's just a post-apocalypse modification for the Pip-Boy that Wastelanders did for fun. Note that the shade of this type of green in particular can look quite different depending on the angle of the sun or the ambient light in the room. Paige points us to his associate, Jen, whom we find sitting in a chair in a nearby pod. I take it you talk to Paige. He said you found out about the job and wanted to help. I did and I do, yep. But there's something we need to take care of first. It'll be worth it. Can't I just pay you? Uh, no. I've been trying to find something for years, and I'm so close now. So, yeah, I'm pretty firmly set on this. Okay. Well, what can I help you with? So, okay. Hilariously, I'm looking for something that is designed to be invisible. Untraceable. It's a suit that hides you from everything, even laser detection grids. Which would help out with Vault 79, right? How will it help with the vault job? We could just disable the whole grid. Government facilities usually have a lot of security redundancies. Ward. There's almost no way to cut the lines fast enough to get past their laser grids. So what if security just can't even see that you're there? That's what this tech does, and I know how to operate it. I couldn't pass the intelligence check, so instead we can say, how do we find something that's designed not to be found? Nothing is completely untraceable. Think of it like a swimmer that's underwater. It might take a while, but they have to pop up for air, right? So there's always brief moments of exposure, even if it's only exposed to certain eyes. You get what I'm saying? Uh, I don't follow. Okay. So, the tech makes you go invisible, but it can't do it all the time. It uses a lot of power and it has to turn off sometimes. When the power runs out, things that know to look for it are going to be able to track it. Specifically, things that are from the same manufacturer. 
those things might relay the sighting, just because most everything keeps a log of what it sees. A memory, right? All right, so who was watching for your swimmer? Potentially a lot of things were watching, but there's one that would have been designed to see it. Probably also relay that sighting too. But just sending that update could blow your cover if you did it directly. Kind of defeats the purpose, right? Right. Are you just agreeing out of anxiety? Okay, I'll try to boil this down while sounding 5% less confusing. Let's see. We need to go take out a Liberator bot to see if it has a record of another piece of Chinese tech coming through here. Can you just cut to the chase? Okay. Basically, go kick the crap out of a Liberator bot and then collect it for me. Okay? I'm going to see if it saw our other Chinese tech. It makes you invisible, sort of. Basically. Why not take down the vault's whole security system? Because then the facility will almost certainly go into complete lockdown, and you'll have to wait until it cycles back up. How do you know about this tech, and how does it work? Would you believe me if I told you I learned about it from a spy? No, I would tell you you're a liar. Well, you'd be wrong then. You don't need to be such a jerk. I just want to help. Maybe. Why, do you know a spy? I didn't have much choice in the matter, I assure you. Can we hold any further questions until I get to the point? Okay, but if you screw me over, I'm gonna be really pissed. Uh, obviously. I get that. All right, continue. I know it's asking a lot, but you just gotta trust me for now. Why a liberator in particular? Liberators like to gossip, speaking in lay terms. They ping each other whenever they see something interesting. It's actually kind of a design flaw. I'll bring you a liberator. All right. I'll see if we have anyone around here who can help out with the next part. So what's the point of all of this? Wow, existential. For a perfectly preserved slice of pie, maybe? I'd kill someone for a great slice of pie, full disclosure. If you help me find the robot, we can find a spy suit, and then I can wear the spy suit for the vault job. Got it? Paige said you're one of their best scavengers. How long have you been doing it? Oh, well, my parents both used to take me along when they went scavenging. They were really good at it, so I picked up some good pointers. So I guess I've been doing this most of my life. I guess a lot of people born after the war and outside the vaults could say the same. You should ask Dr. Penelope Hornwright for help when you see her. I feel like I recognize that name. Is she good with robots? I can do electrical stuff, but hacking and whatnot is beyond me. You probably recognize her last name from her family's business. Oh, of course. We were planning to pick apart one of those air purifiers to see if we could get them going again. I'll have to ask her about that too. Yeah, she's good with robots. Excellent, thank you for the heads up. I was just gonna read Paige's diary to find out who to talk to. See you later, I've got a liberator to nab. Be safe out there. We now have to track down a Liberator drone, destroy it, and bring the wreckage back. And we can do this with any Liberator. A reliable place to find Liberator drones is, of course, the entrance to Vault 76. Heading that way, we can destroy one of these low-level drones and bring it back to Foundation, whereupon Penny tells us exactly where we can put it. Thanks again for lending a hand. Oh, you're quite welcome. Ah, hello again. Put that robot on my workbench, will you? I'll be honest. I was hoping you'd have the mother load just hanging around in your room, Penny. Oh no, there's no room for that. Though knowing her, she may yet try to make an appearance. <laughs> so, do you want the logs from this robot? Yep. Look for an entry that begins with 58 when you're in. That should list any entries related to our target. These logs look encoded, but like nothing I've seen before. I see the numerical headers you mentioned, though. The entry you're looking for would have been broadcast daily since about 11 years ago. Just read the stuff in brackets at the end when you find it. Found it. The part in the brackets says BAI2, QUAN2, YUAN2, and then the number 7. I'm afraid that's all Chinese to me. As in, it's actually Chinese. To everyone. I Yuan Chen. 
Choi. Uh oh, White Spring. Duh. Why seven though? Hmm. Oh, seventh hole on the golf course, maybe. Wait, you don't. Do you? What? Speak Chinese? I mean, it's been a while, but yeah. Wait. So my mom's last known location was a golf course. I don't get it. I can't imagine there's anything spy worthy there. What the heck would she be doing there? Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes, they were spies. My parents were spies. They're both dead, all right? I was born here. I don't know about any of that. No, no, no. I don't care about. I mean, you're looking for spy gadgets. That's like a dream project. Can I see everything when you get back? Uh, sure. That'd be great, actually. It had this biometric encoding, and I think it'll work for a close relative like me. But um, l l let's talk later. You said you're recalibrating the robot. To do what exactly? To find the tech if it's still nearby, and not shoot at anyone along the way. Maybe if you take it to the seventh hole, it'll pick up the signal again. I'll get the lab ready for when you get back. Be safe out there, you two. Wow, I feel like we're actually finally going to find it after talking to Penny. I've never been this close. So, you ready to go? Actually, I have some questions. Okay. Ask me anything you want to know. I don't want a communist on this team or in my settlement. I'm not a communist. Yet the glory of unfettered capitalism is all around us. We're standing in its ruins. You do see that, right? You can revel in it all you like, but it still stinks of death and idiocy to me. I'm not interested in continuing this conversation. So ask me something else or let's get a move on. If your parents were spies, how do I know you're not a spy? I'm telling you that I'm not. Are you exactly like your parents? Why should I trust you? You shouldn't trust anyone out here. Not really. Just let my actions speak for themselves. Well, why didn't you just say so earlier? Because it's complicated. It's hard to know how someone will react, even though I'm not responsible for my parents' actions. What's China like? I honestly have no idea. I was born here sometime after the war, and I lived here my whole life, mostly in the capital wasteland. My parents didn't talk about it much. I know they didn't want to go back, that they weren't supposed to have me or fall in love with each other. We were just a normal family of survivors, except sometimes my parents had to go do things. Then, one day, my mom just never came home. Your mother was a spy, and she got what she deserved. Yes, she did bad things. Ignoring that she didn't have a choice in the matter, you should learn the difference between revenge and justice. Sorry, that must have been rough. I don't think anyone's ever prepared for that kind of loss. I feel like I need to find her so I can move on, but I also don't feel ready for it. Well, that's everything I wanted to talk about. Okay, fair enough. All right, I'll head to White Spring. Sounds like a plan. Oh, don't forget our little recalibrated friend here. I can't believe that Penny's cat isn't robotic. What a letdown. Penny brought her cat with her, Tutti Fruity. And no, we can't harm it. I mean, I do this for your benefit. You always ask me in the comments, is the cat immortal, Oxhorn? Could you test it in the next video? I don't generally kill cats for fun. Not me. Hmm. Inspecting the recalibrated Liberator in our inventory, we see that it's in full-on attack mode. Can't wait to see what this guy does. Before heading out, we can see how Penny is fitting in here at Foundation. I have important work to do. Can this wait? So, I'm guessing you're a scientist. Oh, did the lab coat give it away? Before the war, I was an industrialist. Which, I guess, is just a fancy way of saying I did a lot of paperwork. When everything went up in flames, I did whatever I could to survive. 
I'm sure you know a lot about how that can be, so I won't bore you. It's fantastic to simply be in a lab coat again, worrying about air and water purifiers, worrying about making things better for people in Appalachia. How did you become a ghoul? Well, not long after things really went to hell, I ran across a vault with a faulty door. It was perfectly fine inside, but the door mechanism was shot. I negotiated with those inside, and they agreed to take my family in if I could close it. Closing it could only be done from the outside, and would result in lethal radiation. Imagine my surprise to end up like this. It has definite advantages, though. Sometimes. I miss my nose, though. If we saved Dr. Aubrey and convinced him to come back to Foundation at the beginning of the Settler questline, we find an option to say, what do you think of the Doctor? Aubrey? I suppose he's qualified. He doesn't seem particularly comfortable around me. Another time, Dr. Horn, right? So much to fix, so little time. So she became a ghoul because she agreed to fix a vault door if her family would be allowed inside? Well, that has huge implications. What family? Did she mean Daniel? But she gave us the impression earlier that Daniel, her father, was dead. It has been 20 some odd years. Does this mean that after the apocalypse, she ran off with her lover, Bryce Garahan? And that together they started a family? Could Bryce Garahan and Penny's children be alive in some vault somewhere? Which vault? When we first met her, she said that she knew that vault Tech had a lot of vaults up north. There are plenty of government facilities in Appalachia. More if you head north. What's so special about this one? Perhaps she fled north with Bryce Garahan. And perhaps he is in one of those vaults. Will we see him again sometime later? Penelope has a terminal down here, and we can read some of her personal files. This terminal will update as we progress through the game. Right now we can read personal entry number one. It's surreal being back here. Everywhere I look, I see places that I recognize. Landmarks from a distant time when I had a normal life. It's strange. Everything's dead, but I'm the one haunting this place. I wonder if she would have liked it here. I'm going to head to the estate tomorrow. Something's been chasing me, and I'm starting to get really worried. I haven't gotten a good look at it, but it's big. Really big. I considered sheltering with the people building a fort at the old Spruce Knob monorail, but I can't trust that they'll let me keep my balaclava on long enough to get to like me. I always worry it'll be like that group in Charlotte all over again. We find archived messages here as well, but these messages have been transferred to a secondary data device, probably the Pip-Boy that we got for her. This terminal entry makes things even more confusing. At the end of her first paragraph, she says, I wonder if she would have liked it here. Who was Penny talking about? Her mother? Probably not. Her mother died before the apocalypse. She's probably talking about somebody who had never been down in this part of Appalachia. It almost sounds like she's talking about someone she's in love with, possibly a girlfriend or a wife. Well, maybe it wasn't Bryce Garahan that she ran off with after the apocalypse. Maybe she developed another relationship after the bombs dropped. And it is this she, whom she referred to as her family, that she left behind at a vault. And she mentioned Charlotte here. I think she can be referring to one of two things. Maybe she's referring to Charleston, and she accidentally wrote Charlotte. They both start with CH, maybe she made a mistake. Because the other option is that she really means Charlotte, and Charlotte is a major city in North Carolina. She's referring to what must be a horrible event that took place in Charlotte. Again, we have one or two possibilities. Either she heard rumor of some horrible event that happened in Charlotte, or she was there to witness it. And the way she wrote it in her terminal, it sounds like she had first-hand experience experience of ghoul persecution in Charlotte, North Carolina. The problem is that Charlotte is two states south of West Virginia. First, she's talking about government facilities north of Appalachia, which presumably she visited, perhaps hid her family in a vault up there, but Charlotte is south. Maybe she didn't go north at all. Maybe she fled the apocalypse by going south to North Carolina, and that is where she put her family in a vault. 
After all, it has been over 20 years. That's plenty of time for her to have traveled between North Carolina and West Virginia even by foot. This terminal entry's got me all sorts of curious now. In the Fallout universe, what's going on in Charlotte, North Carolina post-apocalypse? At any rate, heading to White Springs, we can move to the seventh hole. As we get closer, Jen deploys the Liberator drone. All right, let's get this party started. Oh, Penny showed me how to send a transmission to your kid boy directly. In case you didn't know why you're here for my voice. So. I'm not a ghost, I swear. It looks like the Liberator is homing in on the last known location of the tech now. Which, I guess I don't need to tell you, since you're probably watching the thing that you're around right now. Unless you left it all alone in the world so it something. I don't understand what you did. Robots are slow. Oh, I talked to Paige, and we're all good here. He gets that we don't think our dinner. Stuff was always hard for us. Even better with the Foundation crew. Whoa! Hey! Lost of new signal contact. Are you coming out on Beijing or something? I'm getting suited up now. I'll head out as soon as I can. Just try to be careful out there, okay? The recalibrated drone stops at a wooden hatch just outside of White Springs. This hatch leads to the deep? What? Heading inside. Penny here. Looks like your little robot buddy blew up. Oh, well, you must have really given it a good conk when you found it. Usually, these little guys stick their landings a lot better. Jen's already out the door, but it'll probably take her a while to make it over to you there, wherever you are, somewhere below the green. You should look around. Never know what you might find. Bring back a souvenir for your best buddy, Penny, won't you? Of course, Penny, I'll be sure to. We arrive in a cave beneath an old sewer pipe now filled in with concrete and rubble. The wreckage of our Liberator drone lies on the ground. We see a narrow pathway between the rocks ahead of us. Heading up and following along, we can loot a number of Fever Blossom, making this a great location to hit if we want to make some steeped Fever Blossom tea. And soon we come to a Y, illuminated by a brand new glowing plant that we've never seen before. A path opens up to the south, and we see some sort of green glowing mist beyond a staircase. But turning left, we see a darkness behind some overhanging vines. Creeping through, we find a path to the east. We'll explore down here first. Continuing along, eventually, we find a cave cricket. Not so tricky at this level, but these guys are nasty at younger levels. My gunslinger had quite a problem with them. We continue forward and up looting brain fungus and even more fever blossom. We pass even more of these strange new bioluminescent plants. Eventually, we reach another fork in the path. If we turn right, we find a pathway leading up to an overlook and a human corpse peeking out. Peering through, we find... What is that? Some sort of structure buried under White Springs. It rests on an island surrounded by green glowing lava, it looks like. And it appears that the stairway we passed at the beginning leads directly to this building. At the very top, there appear to be cannons, as if this structure was built to survive a siege. But this is just a long drop. So to continue, we need to turn around and follow the left path. It winds on and on. Along the way, we find more fever blossom and kill even more crickets until eventually the pathway opens up a bit and turns into a large chamber. In this chamber, we find more crickets and then uh, a plant, a root, a mandrake, maybe? Something is lying on the ground in the middle of this room, turning around at once we recognize it. It, whatever this is, has a striking resemblance to the creature that we find in the depths of Lucky Hole Mine, only much, much smaller. The being in the Lucky Hole Mine had clearly been there a long time, long enough for iron faces to surround it, cult members to worship at it, and even perform ritual suicide before it. And it had lived long enough to grow large and very human-like. 
but this one still looks like a baby. It even has what resemble arms and legs, and it appears to be curled up in the fetal position. If the being we find in the Lucky Hole Mine is the interloper, could this be the son of the interloper? And just like the creature in the Lucky Hole Mine, it bleeds a sickly black blood. On the ground next to this creature is a lantern. Someone has been here before. Turning east, we find a pathway in the rock, but it leads to a dead end. Here we find a skeleton, possibly the owner of that lantern. He was reaching for a first aid kit before he died. But as this is a dead end, to continue, we head back into the Son of the Interloper room and move to the north. Eventually, we reach water, toxic water. Hopping in, we sink to the bottom and walk along the tunnel floor. If we're not in our power armor, we have a short opportunity to catch our breath before the tunnel submerges. We find a long stretch of this tunnel with no place to breathe. Eventually, we find a pathway to the right, but this leads to a dead end, and there's no bubble of air here for us to catch a breath. If we choose this path, it's really easy to get turned around. If we don't have the right perks, we could drown. So turning back around, we can follow the path west. Eventually, we surface into a large room with a stone column in the middle. The room glows green, but we see orange firelight on the shore. Surfacing on the other side, we can get rid of some crickets. And here we find a corpse in a diver's suit. A diver's suit that until now we've only seen in the Far Harbor DLC for Fallout 4. On the corpse of the diver is a holotape, President's Eyes Only. <laughs> 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 Well, let me try that again. President's eyes only. This here is James Addison of the White Spring Resort staff. I tell you, they never thought I would tell him the truth, but I found it. I swear by all that is holy, I found it. I knew it was there all along. <laughs> okay. See, it started with the rumbling. We had some minor earthquakes. You heard me right. Earthquakes of all things in this neck of the woods. I knew something was right. I was gonna prove them all wrong. All the other people at the resort just laughing at me. Well, who's laughing now? I just discovered a fucking underground spaceship and the rocket fuel leaking off of that thing. Hell, it's making even the rocks glow. I gotta tell the president. I gotta tell the president if it's the last thing I do. I'll be an American hero. Get the Medal of Honor, I bet. All right. Enough talk. Time to swim back home to glory and to wiping that damn smirk off Robbie's face. James out. This is an important holotape because it tells us a number of things. It tells us that that structure that we saw from the window was here before the war, as was all of that green lava, or as James said, leaking rocket fuel. Was it really rocket fuel? But even though James had to pass the son of the interloper to get this far, he doesn't mention it, which means the son of the interloper came after the apocalypse. But what's really interesting about this is we don't know how he died. I mean, he was in a diver's suit. He couldn't have drowned. The water presumably wasn't toxic before the war. There weren't irradiated giant mutant crickets before the war. And there was no son of the interloper here before the war. So what killed James? We don't find any signs of violence around the body. The blood here is all mine, not his. And we don't find any weapons. Perhaps we'll find answers as we keep exploring. There is a lantern by James's corpse and a lantern by a pathway to the east. Following this tunnel, we pass by more lanterns, one after another until we reach Appalachia. We emerge outside and we discover the deep. There is a Blood Eagle camp on this ledge nearby, but really no other close fast travel markers. This means that all we have left to explore is that giant spaceship, as James described it. Maybe it was a spaceship, it did have cannons on the roof. Heading back, we can retrace our steps past James's corpse, 
Along the way, we find a uniformed skeleton next to a skill level one locked ammo box. So the army was down here at some point. Past the window overlooking the spaceship, there's buff out on a ledge here that I missed earlier. And all the way back through the hanging vines until we find the pathway leading to the staircase. Heading along the pathway, we hear signs of combat. Whoa, what's going on there? We pass by a number of ammo canisters along the way, and guarding this walkway, we find communist soldiers? Now we know how James died. He inadvertently stumbled upon a communist lair. Racing all the way down, we find a firefight underway. But as soon as they see us, these communist soldiers attack. It's not a spaceship. This isn't leaking rocket fuel. This is a secret communist Chinese base under the White Springs Resort, where we know the pre-war government had a secret underground intelligence bunker. The Chinese must have known about it, and perhaps they were intercepting communications to and from the White Springs Bunker. This outpost was led by a communist commander in power armor. American power armor. We already know from Fallout lore that the Chinese didn't develop their own power armor. I suppose we can presume that this guy collected a suit sometime after the apocalypse. On the western side of the building, we find a staircase leading to the roof, where we can take out a communist with a missile launcher. There's really nothing up here. If we have a jetpack, we can use it to explore the very top of it. We see these cannons on each corner of the roof, or what I thought were cannons, but maybe they're not cannons. Maybe there's some sort of power conduit or something. There's nothing at the very top. So after we get our fill of the sights, we can hop back down to the ground. Heading inside, we find a security checkpoint. There's a lounge out here and a kitchen area. For a secret communist Chinese bunker, they used a lot of pre-war American goods. Pre-war American television, pre-war American coffee maker, even an Edotronic. The lunch pails are all filled with pre-war American food. Nuka cola I was kind of hoping I would find some Chinese edible goods here. We do find one security terminal. Motherload acquisition facility. Security station, hail the People's Republic we find that the display setting is set to English US, which explains why we can read it. But they're also using a Robco terminal. Was it common for the pre-war communist Chinese to use American technology? We find three entries in the first notice all personnel. To all personnel, initiate facility data wipe procedures. American infiltration detected. Proceed with operation piercing viper. Perhaps this explains why we found the skeleton of a pre-war military service member in the tunnels just outside. Maybe America discovered this place and attempted to infiltrate it, but ultimately were beaten back. And perhaps this explains how the Chinese got their hands on a suit of American power armor. And the next one, security procedures. Facility security procedures. One. All personnel should openly display a facility ID badge at all times. Failure to do so will be met with deadly force. Two, no unauthorized entry or exit from this facility without direct written consent from the director. Any unscheduled access to the facility entrance will be met with deadly force. This includes base personnel without explicit permission to exit or enter the facility. Three, all personnel are subject to search of their person and personal effects at all times possession of any unauthorized contraband will result in application of deadly force. For, if possible, detain and interrogate subjects before applying deadly force in order to obtain any relevant counterintelligence. Interrogation should last no more than 12 hours before subject termination. So it was a counterintelligence base, but motherload acquisition? Were the Chinese working with Hornwright? Or were they trying to steal Hornwright technology? What does this mean? In the next one, tunnel status. Tunnel one, mountain slash north, active. Tunnel two, mountain slash central, active. 
Tunnel 3, Mountain Slash South, Active, Tunnel 4, Meyer, Active, Tunnel 5, Redacted, Dig in Progress. While the area now known as the Meyer was not called the Meyer before the war, which means this list of tunnels must be part of their ongoing strategy, which is why they're currently digging a new tunnel. These communist Chinese apparently don't know that the war ended over 20 years ago. They're still here and hostile to everything and digging tunnels, but for what purpose? To invade and conquer America from beneath with a surprise subterranean attack? And with what? The mother load? Backing out, we can loot more scrap from this platform. We find a duffel bag by a staircase. We find some rifles, canisters of ammunition, a skill of a one-locked toolbox, and we find their bathroom facilities, toilets, and showers separated by only privacy screens. Ugh, after looting a first aid kit, we can take one of two staircases up or a staircase down. We'll go up for now. Heading upstairs, we arrive on a mezzanine level decorated with communist Chinese flags. On this level, we find the hub of their intelligence gathering. Lots of blasted out American computer terminals. Continuing upstairs, we arrive at the top level. Here we find more consoles, tape recorders, ammunition canisters. There's a first aid kit on one of the consoles, an end of dungeon steamer truck with an American Salisbury steak in the corner. And here we find their barracks bunk beds with footlockers at the end of each bed, a randomized plan on one of the beds, more ammo canisters by some privacy screens, and a bank of lockers against the northern wall, and even more communists. <laughs> On the corpse of the communist commander, we find the PRC, People's Republic of China, motherload access key. We find flags everywhere, and even one on the wall, but that's it. We can't go any further up, so to continue, we need to take this staircase down to the bottom level. Here, we find a laser grid off to the north. There are a few more consoles and ammunition canisters down here, but to continue, we need to open a door to the auxiliary control room to the east. On the other side, we find a small room with a ghoul in the corner, but as we approach... Don't! I don't want to fight. I don't want any trouble. I'm here against my will. How shocking. A spy is trying to lie when faced with death. Death smiles at us all. All we can do is smile back. You don't look like a prisoner in that spy suit. Yes, I can see why that would be confusing. Not all of us have the luxury of choice. They threatened to kill my family if I didn't work for them. From what I have overheard on these listening devices, you are working with my daughter. She's on her way here, right now. I didn't want her to have to witness the inevitable. But here we are. Shut up, this conversation is over. If you don't want to speak, then don't speak. But that locks us out. So instead we can say, hang on, I have some questions. So then ask them. Why didn't you just leave after the bombs fell? I did. They tracked me down with tracers in my gear years later. I thought everything was all over. That the governments were all gone. That I was free. If I had known, I would have thrown it all away and just hoped for the best. I thought holding on to it would save my life. But I was wrong. So wrong. Someone tracked you down? Who? Another pre-war asset. Very loyal to the cause. They only come here occasionally to check up on us. But trust me, you don't ever want to meet them. So you were a spy before the war too? Yes. I was trained from childhood to do this job. It's all I knew. I never chose any of this. It was either follow orders or die. So you're saying you were following orders, huh? Orders and a lifetime of being shaped to think and be what they wanted. I didn't question it. Because I didn't know there were other ways to be. To think. We were lied to. 
but people here were also lied to. Once I could see the puppeteers, I wanted nothing to do with any of it. I fled. What is this place? Why are any of you still down here? This is a listening post. Our mission is complicated to explain. Unless you know what's going on next door, I could tell you more if you let me live. Okay, well, that's all I wanted to know for now. Fine. We should wait for Jen to get here before continuing this conversation. This ends the same either way. She shouldn't be long now, based on the proximity warnings on that console. Hey, there you are. I'm here. I caught up. Ma? Wait, how can you be alive, Mom? Why are you here? What is this place? Jen, why would you come here, you foolish child? You need to leave. We came here looking for your corpse. I needed a suit, but I buried Dad with his years ago. I couldn't get it off. He was killed in it. I didn't know you were alive down here. How could I? You left. Just don't move, okay? I, I'm trying to think of a way where you walk out of this. Where we don't just kill you along with everyone else down here. This is... I can't believe what's happening. I was certain that they killed her, but here she is, working for them? It's too much to consider. Whatever she's done, she's still your mother. I don't think she had much of a choice. How can someone do that to their own child, though? How do you just leave them to make their own way in this world? He's asking a lot for me to forgive her. She's not going to give us the tech, and she deserves to face justice for her actions. I agree that she's not going to just give up the tech and walk away. I need to say some things to her, though. Fine. Say what you need to say. Thanks. This will just take a minute. I can't believe that anything she's going to say will make up for abandoning her family. Why'd you do it? Why'd you leave? Did you know that Dad died the very next winter? Did you know that I'd be all alone out there? I did it to protect you. You can't possibly understand the consequences of disobedience. What I sacrificed. You'll never have it as hard as I had it. Do you want an apology? Fine. I am sorry. Sorry that you are such a selfish and thoughtless child. Maybe there is some other way we can resolve this. I don't see how. I'm just so mad. Nothing makes sense right now. You're right. You shouldn't be expected to forgive her just because you're related. Did you know that Dad died because he thought he saw a signal from her? It was a transmission. Too garbled to understand. Just some raider trap. He died trying to find her, and she's been here the whole time! I wasn't mad at her before when I thought she was dead. But I can't reconcile this. There's got to be another way, Jen. I guess I... I don't know. I'm so upset. We don't have to kill her. She can just give us the tech or something. I agree. Just not sure if she's going to make it that easy for us. We just need the spy tech. The rest of this doesn't matter. No, you're right. She abandoned me. Let me think she was dead. And for what? Misguided patriotism. Let's just get the suit and go. She's been dead to me for a long time. If she really just wants to be alone, then that's her choice. We'll take the suit and go. If I give you this suit, then they'll come for you. And they'll find me. Maybe not tomorrow, but eventually. They will kill me for it. I don't care if I die. I may as well already be dead. But they will also kill Jen. And I can't risk that. What she's saying makes sense. We can at least be merciful and protect your life. No, you're right. It's a terrible choice and not one anyone should ever have to make. Let's just get this over with then. I don't see a way out of this. She's just determined to die. You're probably right. 
Dying now is easy, just like leaving us was easy. Living would be the hard way. If we've exhausted all other option, we can choose to attack and say, we are done here. She had her chance. Yeah, you're right. Let's end this. I don't have anything more to say to you. I'll finish up here and then meet you back at Foundation, okay? I need a moment. Sorry, I, I need a moment. Can I just talk to you later? At Foundation? Or we can pass a charisma check of eight to say you don't have to forgive her today. You just have to save her life today and then work on forgiving her tomorrow. I... think I can do that. Mom? What do you say? What if I can help you hide out? We can make it work, can't we? So, how does this work? How can we save you? Let's figure this out. I'll have to go into hiding and destroy the suit. They're tracking it. We might be able to shield the signal from the suit once or twice. But are you willing to give it up after using it? We don't have much time to decide. I could only choose one of these options, and I chose to say, we don't really need it after getting into Vault 79. I guess you're right. Hell of a thing to be thrown away, though. I'll finish up here and then meet you back at Foundation, okay? I need a moment. Thank you for sparing my life. I never expected to be reunited with Jen, my treasure. I'm still very worried, but thank you for your part in this. No matter which choice we made, our only option now is to leave the room. If we go back into the room, we find both Jen and Agent Mochu, her mother, gone. The choices we make here are permanent. Once we leave the room, if we looted the PRC motherload access key from the communist commander, we can now pass through the laser grid. And as we move forward, mother load emerges from the earth. So the Chinese were using the mother load to dig tunnels throughout all of Appalachia. If we get close to mother load and access her, we find options to travel to a number of locations all across the map. If we choose the mire, the screen fades to black and we appear in the mire right around here. If we step away from the mother load, the mother load retreats back into the earth. However, if we creep closer to the entry point, she automatically re-emerges and we can access her to travel back to the deep. We can rinse and repeat this to travel to any of these locations in Appalachia. Savage Divide North, which puts us out in the mountains, really close to the Hopewell Cave, or Savage Divide East, which puts us out in the mountains, just east of the Atlas Observatory, by the big dog on the map. Or we could go to Savage Divide South, which puts us out in the forest, on the far southern edge of the map. The closest map marker to this location is Denton Sun's construction. After clearing the deep and making our choice, we can head back to Foundation. If we chose to kill Agent Mochu, we can track down Jen. Oh, it's you again. Hey. I didn't think it was going to be that hard going in. I didn't even remember her face. Not really. I think I want to bury her next to my dad after all this is over with. Feels weird to leave Foundation behind, though. People here, Paige especially, have really been a second family to me. I'm sorry things ended that way. You should do what feels right. Everyone will understand. Thanks. I appreciate hearing that. Just so you know, I haven't decided yet. But I want you to know that I will be here to help with the vault, no matter what. So what do you do around here? Mostly, I keep an eye on the area around Foundation. I look for good things to bring back and keep an eye out for anything hazardous. If the super mutants are on the move or a bunch of Scorch to move into the area, Ward needs to know as soon as possible. Where did you all come from? Oh, I joined up with them north of here a while back. They seem to be from all over this region. My family used to live in what's now the Capital Wasteland. 
Or if we chose to spare Agent Mochu's life. Hey, I got the suit. Looks like we're good to go. Where's your mother? She's gonna meet up with me after we hit Vault 79. I need to tell Paige about the risk before she comes here. I want to be better about being honest. It's hard to tell the truth when you're afraid of getting hurt. But you and Paige have really helped me out when you didn't have to. It's taught me to trust. A bit. You know what makes me sad? The little liberator we hacked got destroyed. <laughs> nah, it wasn't too badly broken. I snagged it on my way out. Penny's gonna fix it up so it can chase the cat around. Oh good, well maybe we'll see him again. Do you need anything else for the mission? You don't happen to have a piece of Derek's blackberry pie, do you? I bet. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Sorry. Bad joke. I'm all good to go. All right, I'll see you around then. Sounds good. And hey, thanks again. No matter which choice we made, we get a note from Jen. Hey, I was able to find a schematic to a standard Chinese stealth suit, and I figured you'd appreciate it. It isn't as advanced as the experimental one I used, but it's still handy if you like sneaking around. Jen, heading to an armor workbench, we discover that we can now craft the Chinese stealth armor. Its stats aren't terribly amazing, except that it does grant 1,000 to radiation resistance, and we can blend in with the environment while sneaking. It reduces falling damage and prevents damage and diseases from waterborne hazards. And it comes with an accompanying Chinese stealth helmet. If we kept Agent Mochu alive, we don't find her again until we return much later during this quest. But frustratingly, she doesn't tell us any more about what the communist Chinese were doing in Appalachia. How are you doing these days? I get that some of the folks here are really afraid of the Scorch Bees, but for me, it's the giant ugly toads. Ugh! Hello. I am so glad you helped my daughter and I come together again. She's a liar! She said if we spared her life, she would tell us more. But she doesn't, jerk! Now we need to check back in with Paige to embark on the next step towards breaking into Vault 79. But sadly, I'm all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all of my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.